give me a moment's peace and take out that trash. We pay taxes for people to come and take the garbage. Hey, listen, Greeny, no more sneaking rides to the junkyard. Yeah, man, take a taxi when you want to go to the junkyard. Welcome to Hot Trash Unlimited, the show where me and Joe watch movies to decide whether or not they are hot trash. Joe, what did we see this week? We had the unfortunate pleasure of seeing Angel Has Fallen. Yeah, so Angel Has Fallen is a the third in the <sighs> Fallen trilogy, I guess. Now it's a trilogy. Um, about Jerry Butler saving Morgan Freeman as president. And I'll be honest, I don't really know what the first two are about. Um, the White House blows up, uh, London blows up. All of London. All of London. Hence the title and has fallen. I haven't seen the other ones. I don't I, I don't want to see the other ones. Yeah, neither of us have seen the other ones yet. We went into this largely because the other two looked like hot trash. So yeah, uh, we went to see this. And as always, uh, spoilers will abound. Joe, how, tell me. <laughs> it's just this movie. I, I understand, Caleb. Is this movie I'm at a loss for words. It was so good. It's so boring. It's so. 40 minutes in, I had the thought to leave. I usually never have that. I was so done. They hadn't gotten to his dad yet. Yeah. I forget what the actual point I was at where I was like, I think I'm done with this. Oh, uh, was it the truck chase for me? It was the truck chase. That, <laughs> that went on oh. for so long. Anyway, we should plot synopsis. Gerard Butler's training in Virginia somewhere for some reason. Oh, he's just doing it for fun. And uh, the bad guy from X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Colonel Stryker. Yeah. He Who is- I will always call him. I'm sure he's been in plenty of things that are like decent I'm not sure because like <laughs> maybe not. I haven't seen him in many things. He's fine enough in this and the this and X Men Origins. I He's guess. in Wonder Woman too. Oh yeah, Remember he snorts cocaine. Yeah, I don't. He's think, always playing a bad guy. Yeah, I don't think he's in that much stuff because he looks so evil yeah. all of the time. They have this scene to set up that he is. Although I don't think they do this very well. He runs like a... a, a private yeah. military kind of. Yeah. A contract. A, yeah, a contracted militia, basically. He wants, you know, contracts. And he asked Jerry Butler to help him. They didn't set that up well at all. I thought it was just like an army camp they were training at or yeah. whatever. And that they were just like kind of on the same level. <laughs> but then a lot of stuff happens before we get to the real inciting incident of the movie, which is... There's a drone attack on the president, and for some dumb reason, everybody thinks that Jerry Butler did it. Butler is the one who did it. Because, like, I'm guessing Jerry Butler has a pretty long uh, track record in these movies so far of doing cool action things. I don't think drone strikes are in his, like, wheelhouse. His MO. Yeah. (laughs) It's the third movie, and it still seems like... It's just like, ah, this is just the first movie in an action thing, and we're kind of writing this guy's backstory as we go along without really caring too much about what's what's happened previously. It reminds me of two movies. It reminds me of Taken 3, which I haven't seen, but they do the... (laughs) (laughs) But they do the thing where it's like, oh no, now Liam Neeson has to go on the run, and it's the fugitive, but with Liam Neeson. And this is kind of what this is. It's like, yeah. okay, time for him to go on the run, which makes sense. Like you need, a, you need something else. You need to bring your character into a new threat. And then two, it reminds me of layers or of uh, last crusade because they bring in the dad element that is not set up in either of the other two movies. I guess we don't know. <laughs> I like this idea. Well, calling it a trilogy is just, I don't think, think these these movies were ever made with the intention of yeah we're just gonna have the has fallen trilogy no and that's perfectly fine like it's fine that these. oh no i'm not saying i'm not saying they have to be made with a plan in mind but it's very obvious they were made without any kind of plan in mind the best part of this movie and by best i mean the only good thing in this movie is john hurt (laughs) is it's nick nolte 
Um, I don't know who that is. I kept I kept seeing John Hurt's face though. I mean, they both have very old man faces, but I think Nick this Nolte is also bathed in facial hair. Yeah, I think Nick Nolte is a little crazier than John Hurt could probably because he's he's a little bit of a character in real life, and he certainly is in this movie. Gerard Butler goes to somewhere backwoods, finds his dad, who he apparently knew where he was. Oh, yeah, he's been tracking him. He's been tracking him. They didn't set that up either. But, and his dad's left him and his mom years ago, I'm assuming. From what I picked up, I assumed it was when Jerry was a kid. Yeah. Right when he was born. That's That's what it made it seem like. But then with how he's been tracking him for so long, have y'all had a connection? A missed connection, perhaps? There's a Craigslist ad waiting for him somewhere. Anyways, his dad's insane. He's living in a log cabin. Got cameras all around. Bad Colonel Stryker sends his goons out to get him. They escape through a trap door. And then he just nukes this entire mountainside he's living on. Now, this is the only good scene in the movie. And it is just insanity. The drone strike sequence is very similarly, like very similarly composed, where it's just a bunch of explosions and people getting flung like across open spaces. Yeah. But this one's actually fun because there is no reason Nick Nolte should have. He dug- literally just set bombs across this entire like 300 yard radius around his little cabin. And they keep coming. They, it doesn't stop. He has he has one detonator and he can just like, it's going to do that one. Ha ha. <laughs> and and like, then he has, he has some tripwire that you pull and it makes more <laughs> blow up. And it doesn't make sense, but it's fine. It's entertaining for the brief moment that it happens. And you think, you think that this is going to save it, that Nick Nolte is here and that his weird Home Alone bombs are going to make this movie turn into something at least a little bit enjoyable. I, he was such a loony, too. He's like, he's like, big brother's been watching me. I got to get away from it. He's typing his memoir into a typewriter. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't want anyone to read it either. But sadly, he quickly disappears. Yeah. And then we get Gerard Butler just driving for like 20 minutes. We find out that the vice president is working with Stryker and his bad guys. Oh, the president's been in a coma <laughs> this entire time, by the way. Yeah. And the drone strike. I do not know why the vice president wants to kill the president. I understand that power. Yes, but why why doesn't he just wait till the next election? And run against the president or like wait till the president has had his two terms and then run the VP to a very popular president and win. Why does he have to hire Stryker to kill him? I understand why Stryker (laughs) wants to do it because it's bad for business because I don't I don't know. I I don't want to think about this any more than I already have. Jada Pinkett Smith is playing an FBI officer. Yeah, that, it was That her. was Jada Pinkett? Yeah. This movie is full of actors who are way too good to be in this. Tim Blake Nelson plays the VP. Almost 90% of the characters in this movie die also. Yeah. If they, if someone's face shows up on screen, there's a good chance they are dead. Well, every character is utilitarian in the sense that they in some way will inform how Jerry Butler saves the president. Yeah. Like, that's fine, I guess. But... It's very tedious in how it goes about it. I just don't buy Gerard Butler being this like amazing CIA, just like knows all the secrets and everything and can outwit everyone else in the Secret Service. He's not even CIA. He's just Secret Service, right? Yeah. He's just a bodyguard. Well, and at the end of the day, an ex vet, I guess. Uh, yeah. But everybody, everybody's just stupid. Are they stupid? Like, this is the problem, right? He has plot armor. It's just, well, yeah. he survives things that other people don't. The bullets will zoop past yeah. him. I mean, yeah. I don't feel like he ever is doing anything that intelligent. Yeah, stuff just kind of, he lucks out. Oh, man. This, this made my brain hurt so badly. <sighs> so, yeah, Stryker kills the FBI agents. And that should be it for him. Like, how is, how, how do you think you are going to get away with that and still 
keep your privateering contracts. No, I do he just wanted the money and get out at that point, right? Was that his plan? Maybe it was, but it was only like. But I feel like ten thousand dollars or I something. Feel I feel like, like he could I, still salvage. I remember this. them throwing some number out, and I was like, I feel like he should be getting paid more for how, like intense this is. So they blow up the hospital the president's in, but Jerry Butler has come back and he's fighting with concierge from the John Wick movies and they're saving the president. And there's a very drawn out and boring. It's just guns fight. firing. Nothing happens for five minutes. It's just bullets whizzing past and then people die. And I should say, I have a bias. Action is not the most interesting genre to me. It needs to have a twist. It needs to be part of a genre. It needs to be. The striker was the bad goofy. guy. That was the twist. The guy who was obviously the bad guy who disappeared. I mean, do for they treat minutes. it like a twist? They treat no, they the really v- don't reveal his face. They treat the VP like a twist. Yeah, they don't reveal his face at all. Like, yeah, which I appreciated because I'm like, don't treat me like I'm dumb. I yeah. know he's the bad guy. Yeah. I knew he was the bad guy when he showed up because he's Colonel Stryker. Yeah. So this is not my genre, but I'm sure that this is perfectly fine for other people. I let a lot of bad Westerns slide because I like Westerns and I like seeing Westerns. I'm sure there are some people that this will, it will just do it for them, right? Like the opening montage. This is apparently like the best is the thing. I cannot believe that. I I don't, I don't, that's one reason I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to see these other movies. If this is considered the best, if this is considered the self-aware one, but to be fair, like, is it that bad of an action movie? Like, it's boring. It is very boring. And it's generic, and I've seen much better action. <laughs> but, like, it's also, I wouldn't call it bad action. So if you're an action fan, you might like it. Maybe? I just, there's nothing that I'm, like, satisfied after a scene. This, yeah, this I'm is I'm bored true. out of my mind during these scenes, because there's nothing happening in them. It's just no noises, and then the plot continues with no real consequence other than now Gerard Butler has to move. And then they try to, like, link it to real life yeah. at random points, which is really weird. They talk about Russia influencing the election, <laughs> but in, in this universe, like... I'm not going to get into politics or anything, but in this universe, it's a very well-liked president. You're right. No, you kind of... I didn't think about this, but they have a line about, like, Russians influencing an election... But the, the election that the Russians influenced in real life did not happen in this universe because yeah. he was a fictional president. I feel like these movies are always burdened with very tricky politics because, like, how are you how are you going to balance this? And everything has to be kept super vague. And I think of, like, that scene in the beginning with the president giving a press conference and one person is just like, do you think the Russians are going to reform the Soviet Union? <laughs> It's just like, why would they? <laughs> but everything has to be super they, vague. They keep, they have their bad guy. It's the privatized military company. Mm-hmm. And when they're, when they're being stupid and being like, it's Gerard Butler who's behind this. They're like, and he's working with Russia. They, they just make them the bad guy for whatever reason. I mean, action movies have been doing that since the eighties. I like. I think I think American audiences can very easily buy Russia as a bad guy. It's either going to be. It's just I feel like it's weirder because of the real world involvement that has going on right now, and yeah. they're trying so hard to kind of link it while being vague enough. So so let's get to our judgment here. Is this hot trash? No, it's just bad. Yeah, there's no there's no like dumpster fire it got thrown down the compactor long ago and it's been crushed and it's already in the dump there was no spectacle about it you yeah, know it is like i said maybe if you're an action fan you can get some pleasure out of this but it takes itself way too seriously it does not have interesting enough scenarios there's no charisma yeah from like any yeah actor yeah besides well, possibly the dad oh yeah nick nolte but that's I would still say that's only in that mountaintop scene. Yeah, he's kind of mumbling his way through most other scenes. Which, to be fair, is that is his M.O. That's what he does. Okay. <laughs> I don't know this guy. Maybe I probably would if I looked him up, but yeah. This isn't hot trash because, like, there's nothing in it that is goofy enough or weird enough or off the wall enough to be. It is they are going to paint by their numbers and What's we are going to this? go to sleep. We Okay. 
the 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 title the title rolled at the end. Morgan Freeman and uh, Gerard Butler say something about secrets, and it cuts to black. Caleb just left, but then the movie flashes back, and it's some scene talking between him and his dad. And I'm like, are they setting up another movie? I don't care. I'm I'm already up, made my way out of the theater at this point. It's just I think it's a genre problem for us, where it's like we find this genre boring we don't want to see a serious story where it's just like and there's the good old american boy and he has to save the president and there's some vague conspiracy in the background and blah 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 russia although russia russia wasn't actually the bad guy in this so you know putin was standing there with good old cg morgan freeman they were having a grand old time I think what could have really saved this was some like soft sacks whenever uh, Morgan Freeman was talking. Uh, and, and all of his like six lines he has in the movie. Well, no, just whenever he is talking to Jerry Butler, I think with a with a movie that isn't very aware of itself, I think those lines could come off as very homoerotic. And so just... Just push over the edge with some soft sex <laughs> going. Like there is, there's a line in here where the person's like, "I would never betray you," and Morgan Freeman goes like, "I know you wouldn't," or something like that. He's fighting for me. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. It's like he's fighting for me. 